Bienvenue and welcome to Karoo, the end of the beginning, a next step for our new space endeavor. Our Airbus OneWeb Satellites joint venture is just over three years old, and what we have accomplished is incredible. We started from a concept, and today we launch our first satellites. I'm proud of our team. They have worked tirelessly to realize this, and as you saw in the video, we are transforming the space industry. OneWeb, Airbus, and and our industry partners are part of this story. Together, we are defining a new future in space, opening access to all, and building a new space ecosystem. Part of our DNA is captured in the words of a famous philosopher, do or not do, there is no try. Join us. Congratulations, everyone, and bon voyage, F6. And there they are, the guys who we've uh, been hearing from sitting in the Mission Control Center. The, uh, the two from Airbus OneWeb Satellites, the manufacturers who've been incredibly innovative in building uh, our first six satellites. So uh, the frigate upper stage is scheduled to switch its engine on in just under a minute. So we are scheduled to be in the second pre-burn phase. We're having another catch-up moment. <laughs> and uh, if you look at the top right-hand side, well, let's just uh, tell everybody what a catch-up moment is, as, as uh, David uh, explained earlier. So uh, this is, as I said earlier, the, you, you thrust a little bit to move the fuel to one side, just like uh, giving the bottle of ketchup a good shake so that you can get out of the bottle properly. Scheduled frigate second ignition. That means it's scheduled to switch its engine on again, and that's what it looks like. frigate at that upper stage there, the uh, gold structure with the spherical tanks on it, some of those containing fuel and some of them contain things like avionics, uh, kind of things that you find on an aeroplane. It was originally designed as an interplanetary probe and it was adapted to fly on Soyuz, David. It could take its passengers pretty well anywhere they want to go and it can actually switch its engine on up to 20 times. And that's very important for the one web uh, dispenser. We've, so th in this case we're dispensing six satellites but in the future we'll be dispensing much more than that. Um, and as we dispense the satellites a few at a time, it's important to thrust between releasing the satellites so that you can put a little bit of distance and put a little bit of velocity difference between the satellites to ensure that they are not at any risk of coming too close together and to also space them out a little bit when they fly over the telemetry station for the first time in the North Pole. Make sure that they don't bang into each other. And on the top right hand side of the screen you can see we're really climbed up to space now. Uh, though we, we took a steep climb at the beginning then we dipped down a bit. That's called the roller coaster phase where we lose a bit of uh, altitude in order to gain speed so that we can climb higher later in the flight. And now we've come up to a sort of a plateau-y kind of area, which means that we're on our orbit. If you look at the bottom left-hand side of your screen, our altitude... Altitude is a thousand kilometers above our Earth, and that is what we call our separation orbit. So we are now coasting without the engine. Frigate's getting ready to release the first two, two satellites. He's telling us that everything's going according to plan. We need to position them very uh, precisely, David. We're going to release two and then four. Why, why is that? How does that work? So we would normally be releasing four at a time. Um, in this case, we have six satellites, so we have to release two first and then four. 
Um, and the reason that you want to release multiple satellites at the time is just to reduce the amount of time it takes to get all of the satellites off the dispenser. So um, you don't want to release them all at once because they're too close together and they sort of will travel in a big heap over the North Pole. Um, but if you release them one on the time, this mission would take a very, very long time to complete. And so we had to balance between uh, getting things out effectively but doing it safely. Just uh, let's run through those speeds and altitudes again. Our distance in the middle. Confirmation of extinction. And he has confirmation there of the switch off of the upper stage. Just uh, the uh, distance is as if you were to draw a straight line from the pad to where the launcher is. And you can see we've traveled uh, over 16,000 16, kilometers. And uh, he's telling us uh, that we're going into uh, an orientation maneuver. Now, Andreas Dulvaris, who we've seen earlier, he's in charge of getting ready for today from one website. 